Hey guys, it's Canadian Saint Nick with another tutorial to help us get through Twine. Today I'll be doing our Twine Peak Storm Shield Defense 5 tutorial. We're not ready to expand, but it never hurts to prepare. Hey guys, it's Canadian Saint Nick with another tutorial to help us get through our Twine Peak Storm Shield Defense. To Today we'll be doing Storm Shield Defense 5. You can leave any time by selecting Leave with Party from the Storm Shield Console. Hey guys, it's Canadian Saint Nick with another tutorial to help us get through our Twine Peaks Storm Shield Defense 5 this time. I did do this before and I'll be honest, it was a little bit sloppy, so this time I'm going to keep it a little bit more streamlined uh, and hopefully keep it underneath an hour and a half tutorial. Um, obviously you'll be able to tell how long this is going to be when you view it on YouTube, but uh, for now I'm just going to keep this nice and concise. Uh, we'll have a couple of choices for our amplifiers. Um, after we place C down in the pit over there, which you see in my Storm Shield Defense 4 walkthrough, uh, you'll have a choice of this one down in the pit, amplifier E right here, which is just south of amplifier A for me, might be B for you, and amplifier H over here, which is just southeast of the main Storm Shield base. For me, I didn't I didn't like how close the storm shield was to amplifier H. I don't think it let me build enough, and I know amplifier H really gets a lot of pro help. So I didn't want to do that one, and I know this amplifier is really easy, but I wanted to build it later in the in the uh, in the placement of my amplifiers, just so it's gonna get attacked. I thought it was all. When you get a, a wave, it was all based on how late in the game you placed that amplifier. So I, if it was too difficult, I waited to place some of them. If it was too easy, I also waited to place some of them. Um, so that's why you see amplifier C down in the pit was one of the ones I placed, as well as amplifier D down here, which is what we're going to build for Storm Shield Defense 5. Um, I did find that amplifier D down here was relatively easy to defend. Um, just the way that I built made it easy to defend, I think, but overall, uh, looking back on it, it's, it's very resource intensive in a different way than Amplifier C was for us. Uh, so if you watch my tutorial video for Amplifier C, you'll notice that it had a lot of metal in it. I think we went through about six or seven stacks of metal, so you, it was, it was very resource intensive. Um, this one will be resource intensive in a very different way. So we'll, we'll probably go through about two stacks of metal crafting this, assuming of course you take everything to level three. Um, oh, I don't want to level that up. But the re mainly using on this one are crafting materials. This one takes a lot of traps to fulfill. So we want to make sure that we have everything done I wouldn't say perfectly, but in a manner approaching E. So we'll we'll alternate our building materials. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Jump, jump. Now for Storm Shield Defense 5, you won't be able to build all the way out here. Um, but if you portion it to a certain extent, you should be able to build all of this. No problem. Um, another thing is that they don't actually attack this amplifier during Storm Shield Defense 5. Uh, you could actually just walk away from it, to be honest with you, and that would be no problem at all. Let's see here. Can't. Go over our traps in just a moment here. I just want to make sure I get this all set up properly. Oh. Sorry. This is going to be a little wall that'll block them as well, so we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> uh, we're going to put a double wall in the back here, and if you've watched my previous videos, you know that I like to alternate between building materials. So let's say we get, they're going to have really hard time beating against that metal. Uh, <laughs> 
just kidding, guys. Please Nature Smashers it. love metal. <laughs> They'll tear it to pieces, especially if they're 132, 140 enemies like we find in Twine Peak, Storm Shield Defense 9 and 10. Okay, so I guess it's about time to get through our trap placements here, but I'll put it like there. But with the addition of the stone there, it should block most of the nature smashers from getting through. And likewise for water, this metal should be more than enough to block them. So we don't have to worry about it too much. And we're just going to funnel them all to this center part. Okay, so as far as traps go, because this is Storm Shield Defense 5, you're probably going to have all 106 traps, and that's going to be absolutely fine. With the new perk up update coming out not too long ago, probably about a month now, you may have a few traps that are at legendary. If you have 106s fully legendary, more than enough to put on these. Um, but as I said earlier, you're not going to get attacked on Storm Shield Defense 5. So you don't need to rush putting your traps on here. You know, it's only going to attack on Storm Shield Defense 7 or higher, per se. You're not going to need traps, period, on this, right? You know, your quest is going to be finished at 6. Uh, you're going to be playing a lot of 100 missions. You're going to be a lot, getting a lot of level 5 loot. So you don't necessarily need 106 traps. Uh, go up this side. Uh, you do need 130s on this side. I will say it like that. If you don't have your traps fully legendary perked up, if you're like me and you know that blue rolls on your traps are comparable to god roll legacy traps, which were more than enough for previous ones, and you just take it to 130 a little bit early. Uh, this is pretty much how I got my gas traps at 130. They were a legacy roll at the time. I put a lot of 130s on there. My traps weren't that good at the time. So I needed to take them to 130, but if, like I said, if you have 106s that are fully legendary perk up and you want to save your level 5 materials for whatever reason, absolutely, it will be more than enough uh, to take care of 140 enemies. Um, to put it into perspective, uh, I do have my wall launchers legacy still at 130. Here we are. So you see my legacy roll here, it's still the same, except for the legendary perk up one has a sixth perk, obviously, as they put that on the wall launchers, and in this case, it's durability. So when we look at the stats on these, legacy wall launcher, you know, it's, it's pretty good as far as wall launchers go. But when we go to our fully perked up 106, we see the difference now. We see much faster reload time, 0.6 seconds, which feels like nothing, but is the world when 140 enemies are charging at you and you know they just knockback is significantly higher about 300 impact obviously over 4000 durability there's another 10 uses which is massive now uh before if you've watched my twine peak storm shield defense nine even eight uh you could tell that my wall launchers didn't have enough uses and i had to kind of replace them mid wave which caused some some propane tanks to throw them at me in the middle of my tunnel which obviously is not ideal. So if you have 106 fully legendary wall traps, more than compensates for... Sorry, I'm multitasking, guys. And if anybody knows anything about Canadian Saint Nick, it is that I cannot multitask. 106 traps, more than good enough. Don't need to put one there because that's the drop off. Now, as far as why these tunnels are crafted like this, you could, in theory, make two 2x2s. Two Let's say you put another floor here, and you just put two wall launchers on either side to make two solo rooms. The problem with that on this particular amplifier is that there are so many smashers coming through that they don't actually pass for whatever reason they'll just break right through them uh and even if they don't the propane sometimes will just toss it at their feet because so many enemies coming through what would at that point be just two tunnels down the center uh there'd be a lot of enemies coming from over here i wouldn't say a lot but probably about 15 percent of the wave will come from over here and they'll have to come and walk all the way over to the center tunnel if you want to build a 2x2 a two two, or as David Dean has taken to coining the term, a timeout room. 
Um, or, you know, if they come up here to this side, there's going to be so you saw in some of my previous videos as well, like Storm Shield Defense 8, them clogging up in front of the t and throwing propane to their feet because they move forward. So we don't want to clog the tunnels as much. So we have four separate tunnels here, which means the wave is going to get separated. And what we're also going to craft some walls on the bottom here. So further separate come up instead of just all clogging up is nice and neat all being for difference um, as far as go I recommend 130s but like i said you know if you have if you have 106 gas traps fully legendary more than enough if you're going to build your tunnels like i do i would recommend doing the double crit rating double crit damage as well as effect duration on it just because the way i design my tunnels with these one by ones is just that they hang underneath the gas trap itself you're going to see me play some wall dynamos as well. They don't reload the fastest. They have weapons on them, but that should be more, if a little bit higher reload speed. Um, 10.5 seconds is the way I did 10. Uh, Twine Peak Storm Shield Defense 10, that is. So if you have 10.5 second reload time, more than enough for these. As far double crit damage, double crit rating, because Affliction doesn't crit. It just deals a certain portion. I think it's 30 to 45% for traps, uh, like total damage over time, which is nice and all. But as you can see, if it crits, and even though it only says it, it certainly crits more often than it says. If they're sitting underneath it, the, the actual gas trap will deal damage to it as it fires off over five or six seconds if an enemy is continuously underneath it. The damage it deals will be its regular damage, and if it crits, it'll deal that crit critical hit damage. Uh, which seems pretty obvious, but a lot of people don't know that the gas, tra gas traps cause... Sorry about that. Gas traps cause more than... I should have the gas trap. Yeah, most people don't know that the gas traps cause than just their affliction damage. Uh, right here. Gonna get on up here and destroy this gas trap because I do not like it. No, uh, I don't put gas traps over. So you're gonna see like a two square drop here. I don't put gas traps over those because it doesn't give me a chance to keep them underneath the gas trap. And because I use double creeping on my gas trap, uh, having them there is, is negligible. I might as well electric field and have a higher chance to crit as well as hit some of the enemies on this square itself. Not that backwards for this actually. I see my wall launcher placement now. So I'm just going to switch that around. Um, as well the reason I do these nice long walls is because with the propane tanks uh, they still can get congested even though we are at the, like it's there's a lot of congestion even though we have four different tunnels to put them through. We want we want to separate them as much as possible. We want to give them a clear rest. See if they come through here, they're just going to be walking there, right? If the wall launcher launches them across, they're just along the path here. They're not directly in the center of the path because if they want to get through here, they have to walk down the center. So it, it doesn't matter to have these nice skinny walls. But as soon as you will partition walls or even the exact same, you see it goes down the center of the tile here. Well, now if they want to do it, they have, they're going to come through the center of this, and they're going to target this. So if they come through and they're hit by this wall launcher, they're going to be hanging over here. And let's say, you know, there's some guy who gets hit by it right at the start. They're going to be clogging it up now right at the beginning of your which will cause the propanes to get jammed up behind them and then spike the propane at their feet. So that's why we like to keep these nice and open to prevent any mishaps, if you will. Um, now I'm going to use 106 floor spikes. Um, I know a lot of people like to use epics or blues. They cost less. I really like the added bonus of just a little bit extra damage. Um, and probably head. I feel like they, they slow down the enemy a little bit more, having a little bit extra power damage on the trap itself, which is probably just a little bit ahead because apparently all floor spikes just have 30% slowing effect, which is fine. If you have that, by all means. Now what we're going to do here, in theory, this is going to be trapped out probably by Storm and 7 at the earliest. You're going to want to trap this out. Um, like I said, you know, it's just not no. going to get attacked. 
So you would want to put some extra ceiling drop traps there. And quick little tidbit, if you take out your edit tool and switch to the PC you want to build on, you could actually reinforce it even though it's outside of the storm shield defense itself. Um, so again, we want to take all this to tier 3. Just make sure we got this top part before I start moving down here. Obviously, I've missed a few traps. You serious? Make sure my wall launchers. Are and these builds, they're they're pretty easy to take into other Stormfield defenses. Uh, I would say that for probably these half. And if you're in Plankerton currently, I would say do these kinds of walls. When you're in Candy Valley, the reason you want big and thick walls here, for some reason Smashers don't like to beat against these, so they'll actually walk around it. Um, same with Entwined Peaks, unless you're starting to face 125, 140 enemies, in which case you want the full skinny wall there. And when you're in Plankerton, for some reason the Smashers won't beat against this because they feel like it's too tanky. Uh, but as soon as you get to Candy, they will beat against this. And reasons unknown but if you just do that with the wall launcher the dynamo and the gas trap and you hold them underneath i mean it's you could do it in any any zone you want theoretically um it's just all about funneling you know you want to possible into going one direction or multiple directions if you have to and in which case you just build I, mean, I don't know what else to tell you guys it's you build trap tunnels and you kill a whole bunch Okay, this is where things get a little bit complicated. What we're doing here is we're going to create a 2x2 two two on either side. This side actually gets two, but they're not true 2x2s. Two two <laughs> Just like so. And we're going to leave the top open here. I mean, obviously we're going to leave it open right here because they could drop down. Reminds me. But we're also going to leave it open over here because the first time this amplifier gets attacked, they'll be attacked by flingers. What will happen is the flingers will toss the, lob or the zombies themselves. They'll land just about everywhere and anywhere. Usually they'll land on top of this and they'll be like, okay, where do I go? And they'll go for the shortest path possible. And oftentimes that will be these side paths there. Now, if you leave that uncovered and whatnot and they land in it, not a big deal. Uh, they'll probably just walk up and then walk back around to this. And that's why we don't put ceilings on this as well. So they don't get the idea to just drop down there. Or over here, I should say, and maybe down there or... I don't know, God forbid. We'll have structures down there as well to give them a little bit of a uh, two square drop instead of three. Um, but we do want to make sure that they're heavily deterred whenever possible. Now for this wall itself, there's going to be a lot of smashers that like to beat against it. So we're just going to try our best here to kind of funnel them through. Now the reason why I put stairs like this is because stairs will actually block them from continuing all the way down uh, but we want to also prevent them from just thinking okay why don't I just beat against this and then beat against that well in theory it's it's not too good um, if they want to go through this wall then it would just be quicker to come back around through here but for some reason only on wave 10 the smashers have super bad AIs about well, I wouldn't say super bad I would say it's super glitchy that they just amplify off. They're going to take the shortest route, no matter the walls in front of them. Which sounds pretty Smasher-like, but it's, it's very different. Smashers with enough distance will take a, a roundabout path, especially if it's only a couple feet, and they don't have to smash through three separate walls. But they'll do it. So we got to be careful, guys. And that's why I am here. <laughs> So put 
Ceilings here. Another trap that you like is the ceiling drop trap. Uh, just like the wall dynamo, it has 12 seconds reload. It's not really there for damage. Uh, if you notice compared to other traps, even my gas trap that doesn't even have damage on it, can't, it can't out damage the, <laughs> the gas trap, which obviously fires off a lot longer and it reloads faster. So as far as, as damage goes, if you're using a ceiling drop trap for damage, you're, you're going to lose out. But as far as extra damage goes in the traps, not bad. Not bad at all. Of course, I'm taking advantage of my ninja double jump. This might take a lot of up and down if you're taking in your constructor to save on resources. You're going to find it's very difficult to, uh, <laughs> to get around to say the least. So we're approaching the 20 minute mark on this Stormfield Defense Guide and we're we're making some good headway here guys. So I don't want to say anything foreshadowing but I'm glad this isn't going to take us a whole another 90 minutes Wish I could. as I'm sure you'll be. You serious? Oops, I fell down, but that's okay. Even though it's two squares high and my ninja can't double jump all the way, I have a convenient geyser right here, which for constructors will also be very convenient. Add a little bit extra damage to these tunnels. Again, everything goes to level three if you can. Doesn't hurt. There are propane waves and they do deal a lot of damage. Um, go like this. I think I ended up calculating how many wall dynamos this build takes and it's it's something ridiculous like uh, 98 to 100 but honestly because this gets attacked on Stormshield Defense 9 and 10 if not 8 as well uh, y you do to an extent need it put it like so Oh, that's a... Uh, I messed up on that wall. That's okay, I'll just leave it. Ignore that wall dart right there, guys. That. It's wall dart. Do this other side. It's a lot of up and down. Especially because there's four separate trap tunnels. You're gonna... You're gonna feel it. Like, you're gonna... Even though it's a video game and you can't necessarily feel your character's fatigue it's tough okay now a little bit of explanation here the reason why I put a wall dart next to my wall launcher there as I explained in previous videos as well you don't want to stagger the enemy there with the knockback that comes with a wall dart or uh, sorry not a wall dart a wall dynamo obviously the wall themselves will deal exponentially more damage than the wall darts we're looking at almost three times as much damage. Um, even though the wall darts reload twice as fast, usually the enemy is going to be long gone by the time they get a chance to reload anyways. Um, at least 12 seconds compared with the, are combined with the wall launchers. Uh, you have a decent opportunity to, to really stack some damage. Um, but the reason why you put a wall dart next to your wall launchers instead of a wall dynamo is because if the wall dynamos with the impact stagger them. Obviously, see wall darts don't even have impact. If it staggers the enemy, then the wall launcher going off will not knock them into this room or won't knock them over, period. It'll just stagger them and then they'll keep walking after half a second of stagger. So we don't want that to happen, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a wall dart. Obviously, you could tell I, uh, I've been having some fun with a hockey stick recently. Um, I might have done some irresponsible things with my legendary perk up. Don't judge me. Sometimes there's just some good perks to being level 100 plus in Twine Peaks. You just get a little bit extra things sometimes. 
I'll be honest, nobody gets extra things in Twine Peaks. We all suffer the, the struggle of the grind. Send help. Okay, so... And we're just going to build the tunnel down here a little bit. Now that this bottom one, I would say com combine with a wall launcher. I don't know why, but sometimes when they land at the bottom of things, the wall launcher helps. And I'm going to put retractables here. If you have decent floor freeze traps, by all means, put them there. Um, but as far as my retractables go, I use the double crit chance, double crit damage, just because they don't need a reload speed at 6 seconds. And honestly, if anything gets to this part of the trap tunnel, um, it's usually going to show up about once every six seconds anyways. It's going to be Husky Husk or it's going to be Smashers themselves at that point. So I don't really have to worry too much about the reload speed on them. And I just want to do as much damage as possible, honestly. And if those crit, which is highly likely to do, even though it says 43.5%, um, the crit rating just happens to go a lot, lot fast or a lot longer. Uh, that's not the right term, but, uh, it just happens a lot more often, I should say. Let's, uh... Let's do a quick one over here. Wish I could. Uh, I build my floors out of stone just to save on resources, but you don't have to do that. One, two, three, four. Okay. Don't need this floor piece. Add some extra damage along the way. At this point, if anything gets to the bottom, it's going to be Smashers. We want to kill it. Kill it with fire, preferably, but if we can't, that's fine too. We'll just kill it anyways. Nope. That's what this build is designed for. It is designed for maximum killing potential on this side because of the amount of Smashers. Now, if you're like me, you have a lot of pride and you probably screwed up placing a wall dynamo there and i apologize this should be a wall launcher which i'll get to explain in a second but if you're also like me and you have a lot of pride and you like to make sure that everything dies which won't be possible if you're level 100 or so do trying to solo your storm shield versus all these smashers you're gonna have to let some of these smashers go but uh this is this is the build you want per se it's uh it's a lot of damage it's convenient yeah we want to see in there cool. oops Sorry. there we go yeah and this is this is kind of where it gets really dynamo intensive um, so, you know, we mentioned earlier that this is a lot of resources. This is probably the <laughs> materials I've ever spent on a, on a storm shield itself. Um, it's, it's a lot. I'm not going to lie. Most people probably can't afford it. That's why I tell you, don't build this until, you know, you're on storm shield defense seven, at least, um, you're going to save yourself having to tear it all down if you have any 82 traps on it you're gonna save yourself tearing it down it even if you have 106s on it that aren't fully legendary um and you can just put up 130s or 106s if you have them legendary already uh, at this point lots and lots of damage you could put oh that's not what i wanted i did it again guys i did it again but it's okay i have a pickaxe that's what it's for Silent morning for that tractable floor spike, guys. Silent morning. You serious? All right, so we're getting to the bottom of this, and even though we haven't built the other tunnels up top, at the very least, 
we have the core of the defense at the bottom here. And I say the core because if you do this, <laughs> if it gets attacked at any point, Storm Shield Defense 7 or 8, if you build a lava shield up top, everything will drop down, and then you don't have to worry about anything. Everything's going to die, to be honest with you, unless there's propanes. Um, propanes probably make you worry, and you'll probably want to build up the hill itself. Uh, build probably about two squares out there uh, is where the first storm shield stops, I believe, and it doesn't extend for another four or five storm shields. It's kind of, it's kind of weak and pathetic, but uh, that's just what we have to go with, so we make do, right guys? Some fancy dandy walls here. Now, I did just give a big old spiel on. Oh, is that the right one? Okay. I crafted some of my legacy wall friend and I forgot to give them to them. So I have them in my inventory all the time. Now, I did mention before about having a wall dynamo next to your wall launchers. It might stagger them, cause them not to be affected by the wall launcher. It doesn't really matter uh, because if anything gets to this point, husky husk and smashers, you just want to you want to kill them as fast as possible, preferably with fire. You could opt not to put the wall launchers in, um, but as far as traps go, I mean, wall launchers aren't the most damage dealing trap. They're going to deal a little bit of damage even though it doesn't say damage on it. They are going to deal a little bit of damage unless they took that out of the game by now, but I, uh, I'm not familiar with that point. But they're not going to kill anything, but they're going to crowd control and that's what we want. We want to we wanna stagger everything because in Save the World, especially on Storm Shield defenses, about 60% of the waves are all timed waves. I think I, I did. Okay, never mind. I was worried I didn't put a wall launcher on that side. Now, when waves are timed, we see a large abundance of zombies, especially if we're killing them. And if you want to kill them all, by all means, just put dynamos galore. Maybe make these third walls and put wall, dart, wall darts so you get a little bit of crossfire as well. Um, but for the sake of this, this is more than enough. Um, we're gonna go like this. Oops. Like so. Oh, no. I butchered that at the end. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Wish I could. Just trying to get the hang of it all. Yeah, and drop traps, not going to deal a whole lot of damage, but going to be useful. We are using a lot more balanced resources on this one, simply because we have the benefit of knowing if they make it this far, they're not going to care about these exterior walls, and if propanes are going to go off on these small tunnels, it's because you are sitting right here, and if you're sitting right here on your deep, you probably have more problems just propane's blowing up your tunnel you uh, should probably seek some medical help but uh, that's not my expertise so I'm gonna leave it at that oh I did it again I can't tell you the amount of times I did that when I was building it the first just jump right into the hole it's uh, it's a problem that I had I think I missed I feel like I'm missing a tunnel in the in the center I'll get to it Part of the allure of this is you just have to go up and down a lot. And I'll get to clogging up this main causeway in a moment so you guys could see why I did it like so, but uh, obviously it would be a big deterrent if I did that right now. Oops, I didn't mean to take that to three. Um, for those of you who don't know, I take all my structures to level two here just so you know. To take them all to level three and i could just place level one walls and save myself a lot of resources um but by sh taking them all to level two i show you about half the resources that i use actually i show you exactly half the resources that i use as far as building materials go so you could kind of reason it out yourself of how many resources you'll need to build this for yourself 
Um, so now that we finally have them underneath a trap of some worth, we're going to have a gas trap there. Um, now I say of some worth because gas traps just deal so much more damage than all other traps because they fire off for that 6 seconds, because they combo with that affliction damage. They're the top trap in the game are wall because of their crowd control effect, but the gas traps are just super uh -huh. util utility. It's, uh, it's, it's quite the spectacle to build a, just any old mission. I could go in mission and place two gas traps and funnel them properly, and I would have the entire wave. I might have to fire, you know, a few clips if a smasher comes through. Or if, uh, if they hit the wall launchers awkwardly, and I can't defend that. So what we're going to do as far as our actual amplifier defense is going to be very, very, very simple. We're going to double double layer it. Sorry. So everything gets Can't. upgraded eventually when it's done. Wish when I it's could. done. I'll go clockwise or counterclockwise here. <laughs> Oh, that's, uh, well, that's different. You guys see that I'm on the triangle, right? I'm not just going crazy. That's a glitch they've been having in Fortnite recently with the building UI, but that's fine. Serious? Uh, that comes with playing a beta. Um, I meant to keep this open. As well as this side as well. That's why we double layered it on all sides as well, guys. So that when it gets to this, so let's say a flinger bypasses everything as flingers like to do. And they decide they want to throw some kind of zombie on top. They're going to come over here because this is the last... Are the closest to being inside that amplifier without dropping down on the ground and we'll block off the bottom side eventually here but uh for now this will be eventually the the last line of defense um as far as inside the structures go i should probably touch on these slanted walls first i'll tell you about this okay so we're gonna put brick here because it repairs faster than metal like three times faster it's great and It has decent health, which is a nice bonus above wood. I did wood for my Storm Shield Defense 10. It turned out wonderfully um, in terms of just putting it back up on that spot between the wall launchers and the gas trap and the dynamo right here. It Oh, I think it's all this level 3. Oops. Um, but basically what happens, the smashers come down, they beat against it, and then the wall launcher knocks them back underneath this gas trap, or the floor launcher does. And if they beat against it, then it destroys... That's when the wall launcher finally activates because the wall launcher for some reason won't activate on this slanted wall which i'm fine with because the dynamo still activates and the gas trap still activates but the wall launcher won't so as soon as this wall goes down the wall launcher is going to fling them underneath this gas trap which is lovely by the way it's a nice 130 fully legendary perk double crit chance double crit damage or uh sorry double crit rating for some of those newer players in twine peaks they now have crit rating instead of crit chance which is interesting choice but it'll keep them it'll keep them subdued it won't last forever you might kill one or two smashers that really got lucky and and kind of got hit by every trap along the way for those that get through we're going to implement a style that david dean actually made pretty famous he put these walls over here and he just let them charge at them because obviously as we know the smashers will charge at any walls that support the amplifier itself directly as a final defense. Um, now even though these are on the opposite side of where they'll be spawning towards the south, they are technically the last line of defense for the smashers. So when they get to these upside down slanted walls which they can't actually charge against, they'll beat against them until they're gone. Um, it's going to take a while sometimes. Um, that's fine if they break those. Um, mostly these slanted walls are here just so that they don't charge from right here at the wooden walls in the back because if they do then this wall launcher is taken out and then we can't crowd control them on this final square with the gas strap. 
So that's why we have these slanted walls here to keep them back. But once those slanted walls are out, they're close enough now where if they do charge, let's say at these walls, which are closest to this tunnel, or those walls, which are closest to this tunnel, they're not going to be messing with our pivotal wall, which is these wall launchers. So we could get them to just charge off into the lava, even though it doesn't necessarily kill them all the time. It definitely keeps them away from the amplifier because there's no actual way back out of this lava which is preferable to say the least um, now I'm going to do something that I did on mine which I built these stairs up I think I built them one lower I'm trying to remember where I put that extra wall dart I know it was made out of stone I'm just wondering if it's right there or I think it's right here. Yeah, it is. Okay, so this is an extra wall dart we don't need, as well as an extra wall. And obviously, if you're in fine peaks, you're going to be up on 8, 9, 10. This is going to be heavy on the structure, so if you follow my guides, you'll be fine. But if you, you know, you, you haven't really been paying attention to your guides, um, and you're just kind of winging it and looking for a good build, you're going to have some structure problems. This one needs those structures, whereas other amplifiers don't. They don't have problems with smashers beating against two by twos. This one definitely does. So we're gonna we're just gonna build it up a little bit. Okay, so we should defense five. You could put gas traps here. I opted to when I oh, okay, I'm having some issues here. When I built mine, I did put gas traps on the roof. Just a little bit extra damage, doesn't hurt. Here we are. Okay, now the other direction that they can come from is towards the west here, which is a big pain in the butt. We'll get to it. But for now, we're gonna just gonna double check to make sure everything's trapped out. So we don't want things to go sour. And um, speaking of sour. I do believe they come here. Just want to make sure everything is locked off as much as possible. So you see now we got metal, stone, metal. And now I'm worried that they might spawn on top of this cliff here. Um, and then come, like if I put these sideways so that I was actually facing the spawn on that side, they would drop down here and then walk across and then walk down free reign to my amplifier itself. And while I could probably make a trap tunnel on top of my trap tunnels, um, it would be very perilous. So at this rate, you know, if they come down here and meet against this wall, it'd be no different than just walking onto that. So it's Can't. it's not terrible. It's, it's not great. But uh, considering I don't know the spawn itself, I'm just, just going to have to make do, guys. And that's, uh, that's part of the beauty of Twine Peaks is the different terrain really prevents... Or, really inspires a different kind of creativity. <laughs> now, that Storm Shield Defense 5 guide, to be honest with you, they're not going to attack. Um, if you lay your amplifiers like I've been laying them out, they're never actually going to attack from the west. So that's our Storm Shield Defense 5, guys. Uh, appreciate you watching. Um, if you keep watching here, I will build this up, but it's going to be highly sketchy to say the least. Just wondering how far away they would spawn because they can only drop two squares tops. I guess they could spawn on top of this cliff, eh? That wouldn't really make sense though if they spawned all the way on the cliff. Then they would have free reign. Nothing can stop them. You know what? As far as guides go, that's uh, that's not bad. We're going to leave it at that. We're not going to touch this west side. It's a big, big issue if you don't put your amplifier there. On oh, uh, amplifier G. So that would be Storm Shield Defense 8. You don't put your storm or your amplifier up there by eight. That means that you've placed H and I, 
And H is, is a bit of a pain in the neck if you're doing it on 8, because the Storm Shield is still very close to it. It's only starting to expand at 8. Um, whereas G, it's it's way out there. Um, and it's it's kind of cool. But if, if you don't build G on Amplifier or on uh, Storm Shield Defense 8, you're going to have some serious issues as far as zombies coming from that west side. I would guess that 8 is when they start switching it up because 8's when they started coming from the north side on Amplifier C in that smaller town we built on my Storm Shield Defense 3 guide. Um, I'm not going to touch the west. I'll be honest with you, I will highly advise you to build Amplifier G before Storm Shield Defense 8 or on Storm Shield Defense 8. Um, if you can, that would save you a whole lot of butthurt. Because <laughs> Stormfield Defense 8, uh, 125 enemies, I believe. And if if you're not with your traps, because you need the most damage per square on that side that I, I could even estimate. Um, your gas traps would be all but useless, so that means you would have to have probably all legendary perk up on all your traps. Um, you would have to perfectly execute your dynamos reload speed. Um, you would need two different dynamos in theory, I would reckon. Um, one would have to be high reload speed, probably straight damage just to take out the lower leveled husk, the uh, mini ones, and keep the other ones like this, you know, just high damage, fire off occasionally. But if it catches a smasher, it's going to chunk it. Your ceiling zappers, if you really wanted to, but you're not going to take out a lot of enemies, right? They're single use. Even though this isn't full durability, um, those are my legacy ones that I'm still using. Actually, those have quite a few durability rolls. Yeah, so they have they have a decent amount of durability on it already. Um, as you can see, these ones have less. They only have 42, so you're only going to take out 47 enemies with it all. But because it has a 12 second reload and you really don't want to put reload speed on your ceiling zappers themselves because you don't want to sacrifice that damage that you need, um, it really doesn't make sense to, to have the ceiling sappers. Um, because, let's be honest, 12 seconds times 47, it's, uh, I'm not the perfect with math, guys, but you're not going to have enough, your storm shield's not going to last that long combined with your dynamos. That's why we use the gas traps as a kind of weed it out, because they have a, you know, that five second fire off time and even though it takes eight seconds to reload it's already reloading as soon as it fires off so we only have to wait a few seconds per se before it starts firing off ceiling zappers at least they cover a wide variety you know really churn out the, the small fries same with retractables um i would say floor traps you would probably need a retractable on every square just to be safe put floor spikes maybe next to wall launchers if you have the ability to to put any two by twos probably right here actually is i i kind of built this in my tutorial before that went 90 minutes long i put a, a couple two by twos here when they fell down the cliff um you could build it here as well they just keep tossing them back into it yeah because they would they would love this hmm. yeah i'm not going to build it but be a massive waste of resources because to be honest with you that's actually a really easy amplifier to build amplifier g and defend i can't actually show you my defenses that's one of the reasons why we have these uh this structure notification after one amplifier being built you'll notice my other ones are all torn down but uh amplifier g is still fully built and it's it's not nearly as as resource intensive as amplifier c was but it's it's up there, as most of them are, as well as Amplifier F over there has its defenses partially intact, probably about 60%. But yeah, but yeah guys, that was my Storm Shield defense, and thanks for watching.